Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on calculating the correlation coefficient, otherwise known as R, using Microsoft Excel. I'm going to show you a couple of ways to calculate R using Excel. Uh, one is to go through the steps to calculate it using the equation. Another is to use the built-in function in Excel. Uh, I have another video that covers how to use the data analysis analysis tools and you can see there's a correlation option in that. So there's another video that covers that so in this video I'll be going through the steps of the equation and using the function. So I have some fictitious data here on the left. I have an independent variable at two levels. The independent variables group and the two levels are control and treatment. Now I'm going to be focusing on the control group for this video. And then I have two sets of scores. And these are both dependent variables, post-test 1 and post-test 2. So let's say in this uh, study, what we're doing is we, we're using a dependent variable that's known to reliably and in a valid manner measure the construct of interest for our study. But we also have another instrument named post-test 2 that we're testing out in this study and we want to see if it has concurrent validity with post-test 1. And one of the aspects of concurrent validity uh, could be correlation, meaning do the scores from post-test 1 correlate, in this case we would be looking for a strong positive correlation, do they positively correlate with the scores in post-test 2? If they do, that supports concurrent validity. Although, of course, there would be other factors you'd want to consider as well. So remember, between any two sets of scores, you're going to have correlation. Correlation ranges from negative 1, a perfect negative correlation, all the way to positive one, a perfect positive correlation. So if you have a correlation of zero, that's still a value, that's still a value of R, which is valid. It just represents that there's no relationship between the variables. So we want to determine the correlation coefficient for these two sets of scores. So let's take a look at the equation for calculating R. So first I'm going to look at the numerator, and then I'm going to look at the denominator for this equation. So if you look at the numerator here, you can see the first thing it's looking for is x minus x bar, which is simply the observation minus the mean. So in this case it would be the mean for all the scores in the control group, and x would represent post-test 1. So this is the post-test 1 score minus the mean for post-test 1. Similarly, you have y, which should be post-test 2, and it would be the observation for y, the score, minus the mean for the post-test 2 scores. These two values in the parentheses are then multiplied together, and then we add them up. Uh, so sigma is the sum of, so this would be the sum of all these multiplied values. So now you kind of see how the numerator works. The denominator looks probably more straightforward because you'd see the same values here. You have x minus x bar up here and you have it down here as well. It's a little different than the denominator, of course. You're going to take x minus x bar, square it, and then take the sum of those squares and multiply that by y minus y bar squared, and the sum of these. So you're going to multiply these two sums together and then take the square root. Then, of course, the numerator is divided by the denominator, and that gives you the R value. So let's move through this step by step. First, we'll calculate the X bar and the Y bar. You can see I have them up here in row 1. In Excel, it's fairly straightforward. It's average is the function. So take the average for all the post-test 1 scores, 
you can see it's 47.3. I'm going to move up into the function bar and just press F4 over the beginning and end point of the range. That makes an absolute reference. This way I can autofill it all the way down. Remember, I'm just looking at the control group. So now I have the mean for the post-test 1 scores all the way down in this column. So I'll show you a shortcut for calculating a Y bar. Just autofill to the right and then go into the function bar and you can see the blue rectangle that outlines the range for X bar. Just move that over to a post test 2, your Y values. And then you have the mean for the post test 2 scores and autofill that down. So that's fairly straightforward. So now we have X bar and Y bar in the equation already calculated. And then we're gonna, now we're going to calculate X minus X bar and Y minus Y bar. Again, this is fairly straightforward. Equal sign, in this case B2, which is the first score for post test 1. And then we're going to subtract the mean. And since we've designed it this way, where the mean appears all the way down this column, all we have to do here is just autofill. And there it's uh, the scores. These are all the scores minus the mean. We'll do the same thing for y. So take post test 2 minus the mean for the post test scores and autofill all the way down. So we look over at the equation and the next thing it's asking us to do is to multiply these two values together. So it will be equal sign and F2 multiplied by, that's an asterisk, by G2. So there we have that, that value and again just autofill that all the way down. So now if we add these values we have our numerator so I'm just going to go directly into the numerator label here and to add them all together we'll use the sum function and select that range 793.7 so we have the numerator calculated so now let's move to the denominator so first we want to take x minus x bar and square it you can see I have that up here in row 1 so it'll be equal sign and then I'm going to go to x minus x bar and I'm going to hit shift 6 and raise this to a power 2 because we're squaring it. So there you have this value is now squared here. And again, you can just autofill this all the way down. And for y minus y bar squared, it will be equal sign, in this case g2, again shift 6 and then raise it to a power 2. And now that calculation is complete. So now I can build the denominator. And what I'll do is we know this has to start with square root. So I'm going to start with SQRT, square root, and open parentheses. And it's going to be the square root of the sum of all the x minus x bar squared multiplied by the sum of all the y minus y bar squared. So what we'll need next is sum, and then we'll select all the x minus x bar squared values, and it'll be shift 8 for an asterisk, and then sum, and then all the y minus y bar squared values, and then we'll close parentheses for that sum function and then close the parentheses for the square root function. So you can see we handled that last step with a function that uses, or a formula here that uses more than one function, square root and then sum a couple times. You could also break this out into separate cells if you wanted, 
but I decided just to put it into one, um, one formula, into one cell. So now we know R is fairly easy to calculate from this point on. Equal sign, the numerator, divided by the denominator. So it gives us 0 0.9068844. So let's see how that compares with the C-O-R-R-E-L function, the correlation function in Microsoft Excel. So that would be equal sign, C-O-R-R. -R. I see it comes up, C-O-R-E-L. And it's looking for two arrays here. So it's important to put this information in correctly. You have the first array is going to be the values for the post-test 1, then a comma, and then array 2 will be post-test 2. And you can see it is identical to the value that I calculated using the equation. And this is a fairly strong correlation, 0 0.9. It's a fairly strong correlation. So if we were trying to support concurrent validity, and this, again, is one of the common steps for this. Uh, we would say that these are highly correlated, highly positively correlated. I also want to take this opportunity to explain the coefficient of determination. Uh, you might see this every now and then. And it's also known as r squared. And as you can imagine, calculating it is fairly straightforward. It's the r value, and then shift 6 raised to the power 2, or squared. So in this case, the coefficient of determination is 0.82. And you want to think of uh, r squared as a percent. And what it tells you is the percent of one variable that is directly accounted for by the other. So another way you can think of this is in terms of shared variance. It's the percent of shared variance between two variables. So in this case, 82% of the variance in the scores in post-test 1 is shared with the variance in the scores in post-test 2. I hope you found this video on calculating the correlation coefficient in Excel to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me, and I'll be happy to assist you.